Yeah, it was a super impressive performance by LA and you got to give some credit to Austin too for defending with you know, LA having that much possession and territory. Usually they're in the 40s for their points. So good game all around. Great breakdown. All right, let's get to our player of the week now and uh, another great week of performances. This was a tough one to choose and it's an exciting one because uh, it's the second time this guy's joined us in the last two years. So let's not stand on ceremony and welcome him in. Jason Robertson from Old Glory DC. Yeah, we've had a lot of growth and obviously we've had so many different combinations between boys playing different positions, out of positions. We've seen lots of growth in our boys' skill set from shifting from the wing to the midfield, which has been new for some people, from loose forward to lock, from prop to hooker. So we've had lots of growth in boys learning different new roles and uh, it's been pretty pleasing to see, especially some of the new college kids. But shout out to Sam Cassano from Cal Berkeley. He's yeah. we've come a long way in, you know, in eight weeks, unfortunately shoulder injury at training, but he's He's a good, good kid who's come from a good background and it's so pleasing to see him grow. Um, to see us go a little bit further, I think we need to be more ruthless. I think we're leaving teams off the hook. You know, we're creating some good opportunities to score. With them. We're not quite ruthless enough in that, in that red zone. Um, if we start piling some points on teams, um, I think we'll be heading in the right direction. Um, nothing as of yet. Obviously, really proud of the boys and you always want to represent the country, so that's awesome news for them. Uh, I guess it's going to be the same for every team. Obviously, some teams hit harder than others. I know Toronto might be hit quite hard with the Canadian squad. Uh, New York a little bit. They've got quite a few Eagles in their forward pack. Uh, Nola as well. Um, I don't know, it's, depth, is going to be, depth is going to be tested. Um, hopefully, we're good enough to be able to come through those games. Um, I do think it's a little bit silly having the international window coming right into the business end of the season. Obviously, it's unfortunate with the, the way that COVID's affected the start of the MLR season, but it's obviously you want to play for your country and that comes first. So yeah, obviously congrats to the boys for that. Yeah, I guess during the week, we hadn't put a back-to-back win, we hadn't put back-to-back wins together yet this year. So after we beat Seattle, you know, we weren't getting ahead of ourselves. We needed to back it up this week against Houston and start to, I guess, walk the talk. We knew how tough Houston were going to be down there. We played them down there last year and they gave us a, a hell of a fight. It's going to be no different this year. There was a, a tough, awkward team to play at home down there. Um, then as soon as we saw the weather coming in, kind of changed a little bit. <laughs> we didn't expect to take our snorkels down to Texas, but <laughs> we got the job done in the end. Um, but yeah, like it was just a, a really a performance that kind of showed our character. Um, we, had a, we had a pretty awful warm up into the game and we got a bit of a, a serve from Callum Gibbons, but it's kind of what we needed heading into the game, a kind of an attitude switch which kind of, it, it definitely works because um, our forwards laid a, an unreal set uh, platform for us. Our scrum was unbelievable. Our line out, our mall was really, really good, which made us game drive, our game driver's job a hell of a lot easier. Um, yeah, luckily we got the job done in the end. There's, there's like a, a groan in the crowd when you see the scrum half set up for the box kick. And, you know, there's, there's, there's a couple of different reasons why teams box kick. And so one is to create a contestable kick. And so the contestable kick is much more likely to be near the halfway line or even in a um, another um, or, or, or in the opposition half. When you're in your own, you know, probably behind your 10 or, um, you know, certainly, you know, inside your 22, you might want to kick it out. But outside of your 22, between your 22 and 10, you're not really looking to have a kick that's contestable. What you want to do is you want to create distance. But the really important part of the drop kick is there's, there's, well, there's two um, pieces that are really important. So one is the location of the catch. So what you want to do is you want to have the catch as close as you can have it next to the sideline. And what that does is it cuts down the attacking options. So in other words, it's much easier to defend someone who is close to the sideline because they've only got one way to pass, right? And you know where you can build your defensive wall from. So that, so first of all, where the ball is caught is really important and like all kicks, but I think in particular with drop kicks, it's about the kick chase. All right, Pete, let's pick him for this weekend. Uh, we have five games to pick. So this is, this is a good sample size. And uh, hopefully, we both of us can get moving in the right direction again. Toronto at New England. New England never lost at home. Two and two. Uh, two and oh, sorry, at home. Um, who do you like in this one? You know, um, 
I'm a little bit on the Toronto bandwagon. Like they had a weekend off. They they were they you know they weren't playing well, but they were winning. I think that weekend off is going to be big for them. I know it's been just a grind for them down in Atlanta, and I know it's tough. Um, you know, I'm you know it's interesting what you talked about about leadership for for New England. That's interesting. I think this is going to be Toronto, um, and and because I think it's going to be Toronto, I think I'm going to pick New England. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, it's like one of these games. Where I'm like, it's definitely gonna be. All right, I'm gonna pick New England. I think New England win by five. So we we've, we've talked on this show the bye, right? Like teams haven't played well after the bye. That's true. It's historically, it's just the way it is. This could be a different trend to that because I think they needed the bye. Where other teams probably didn't need to take a buy, but they got the buy, and it was like yeah. Toronto needed this buy. It's also good timing, right? Like it's a better yeah. buy later on in the season, so. Yeah, so I'll go. I'll go Toronto. I just, I don't know. I don't know what New, New England continues to baffle me. But they'll, they're strong at home, and I think I think this might be the game that their restrictions lift, so they can get a big crowd in there. It's not this. No, it is this weekend. I'm pretty sure that the governor in Massachusetts has uh, relaxed the, the capacity laws for this weekend, so it should be a pretty decent crowd up there at Union Point. So get out there, Free Jacks fans, and enjoy that one. Houston at San Diego. Well, if Joe Peterson plays, I pick San Diego. If he doesn't, who knows? I'll go yeah, San I Diego mean, though for now. You know, you know I, um, I, I, I mean, which, which I, I don't think it's which team is going to win. I feel like it's which team isn't going to lose. That's how I feel about it. Because even though San Diego came off a, like, you know, a, 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 an upset win against Nola. I don't think they played like fundamentally. I don't think they played very well. I think I think that was a real struggle for them. So, you know, I think that there's a um, yeah. So I think it's a it's a it's a bit of a challenge. I think for um, for Houston to go out there. I'm not sure what confidence they have. San Diego have confidence there at home. Um, I think you're right it's about Joe Peterson. I think if Joe Peterson plays, I think San Diego wins. I think Joe Peterson does play. And so I'm picking San Diego and I think it's San Diego by 10. Yeah, I have to say the same thing. When, we'll, we'll talk a little Eagles after we go through this, but when will they be missing from the roster? I think this one's the game of the round. LA at Atlanta. What are you thinking here? I like, I, I'm so excited for this game. It's like the um, you know irresistible force meets the immo immovable object, right? You've got. Did you um, see the rugby network meme? What was the rugby network me meme? Um, so it was uh, Adam Ashley Cooper in four different shots. It was like, hey, Atlanta, how about that losing streak or winning, winning streak? streak. Wait, yeah. uh, it would be kind of sad if it ended this weekend. Okay. Oh, that Adam Ashley Cooper. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'd like to point out that Aaron describing a meme on a podcast is, is like great entertainment. It's just like, yeah. <laughs> just, just get um, online and look at it, people. Right. By the time this comes out, it'll be so far down the feed, you won't even be able to find it. I think, I think the question here is I think Atlanta can, can play the defense. Um, LA can play really, really fast, right? And so it's going to be about the set piece. And I think if Atlanta can have the edge in the set piece, I think that's going to be uh, uh, like I, I haven't seen the Atlanta team have that edge that have been dominant that they would do that. So I think LA is going to win this, but I think it's going to be a relatively low scoring game. I think it's going to be close. Thanks for that. 21 18 LA. Yeah, hey, it's just going to be great because New York obviously is fresh in everyone's mind still what they did. I think Atlanta can do that more effectively. It's another long road trip down to a hot, sticky Atlanta. So you're not in like LA's warm, but it's not like hot and humid and sticky like Atlanta can right. be in, in in late May. Is it still May? Yeah, it's still May. Oh, sorry. It's still May. I'm losing, I'm losing. This is the last weekend of May. I am good. Uh, I'll go I'll go LA as well. I think I think you are right though. I think this is tight. And I think this could be one of the ones that it comes down to the that, that weekend we had a few weekends ago where like all the games were decided in the last, you know, 60 seconds. So this could be another one of those ones. 